Welcome to Net Zero. I'm Ivan Ransom. Have you ever wondered how your individual actions can create a significant impact on climate change? Today, I have the great honor of speaking with Dr. Ash Pachori. Dr. Ash is a distinguished expert in public health sustainable development, and I am delighted to have him here with me to discuss his groundbreaking work with the pop movement and his two new books, Small Steps, Big Impact a simple guide to individual action and collective impact to tackle climate change, and Simple Steps to Sustainability, a workbook to guide individual climate action. Welcome, Dr. Ash. So can we proceed with the first question? Absolutely. I just want to say thank you so much for having me. I um, am very, very proud of Net Zero and feel very honored to be in this conversation with you. Can you share what inspired you to write your latest books? What message do you hope readers will take away from each of them? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, but the books have manifested and I feel very grateful for it. But at the same time, you know, they didn't emerge out of the blue. The truth of the matter is that at the POP movement, where POP stands for Protect Our Planet, we've been actively engaged in working with the youth of the world to take knowledge-inspired action on the issue of climate change. One is that um, while we talk about knowledge-inspired action, it means looking at the science of climate change and understanding how that science can guide action. So the real inspiration behind these books, to be honest, it was to break it down in the simplest form and format to understand what climate change is, what the impacts of climate change are, and the fact that all of us have a role to play in terms of being able to tackle this issue. It does mean small changes, but we can make little, little adjustments in our lives, which can help us tackle this issue. And when you start to co collectivize all those little steps that each one of us is taking, the impact is big. The pop movement has been instrumental in nurturing projects that tackle climate change through technology-based solutions. Can you give us some examples of these innovative projects and their impact? There's actually a range of different uh, projects. And it's interesting that you asked me this question because we're uh, in the process of actually having out in print very, very soon, probably in the next coming hours, a book called Economics for Educators, 99 Ways in Which Schools Can Save Money and the Planet. And I, I contextualize this book only because the case studies and experiences and examples that are captured within this book that actually talk about experiences from the pop movement and of course, experiences outside of the pop movement. One is uh, that of a project called Resilience 2020. And it looked at applying technologies that are eco-technology. So these are technologies that can support the, the larger ecosystem, solar technologies and, and such. So this basically founded on renewables. And these is a very simple model, which allows for these technologies to be adopted by communities for communities. But there's another one which is very interesting, which is of uh, uh, the pop, pop Germany. It's a high school, but this particular school has in fact implemented solar technologies in a manner that has not only reduced the costs of running the school and the utility bills that emerge as a consequence, but also simultaneously educated and mobilized young people. So young people are part of conservation of nature, the understanding of renewable energy and the benefits that they produce. And I think that when you start to tackle issues by and for communities with local leadership, that's when it'll sustain because it's not dependent anymore on the pop movement and or in person or people within the movement alone. Now, your work spans public health, sustainable development, and climate action. How do you see these fields interconnecting? And why is it crucial to address them together in today's context? I want to say that this is such a critical lens to adopt when tackling any of our development issues. Because at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is that it's about people, isn't it? and people have so many different needs. So I just wanna say it's very important for us to truly be able to tackle issues, to look at them very holistically. If you look at people as one whole, um, then, you can, then you can begin to have honest conversations with them about it. And so that's, that's, that's my thinking. I by no means have the solution to everything, but again, I think just like small steps, big impact, 
every drop towards the ocean. And I hope uh, together we're gonna make we're gonna make the change we need to see in the world. You have led over twenty thousand workshops globally, reaching out to youth and communities. What have been some of the most rewarding experiences or success stories from these engagements? Number one, I think given an opportunity, if you uh, need young people and or communities to find ways that are creative to express their issues, you will be amazed at the magical methods that they emerge uh, and, and uh, they arrive at to share their stories. The way that they're able to use art and theater and drama and music and dance and film to share their stories. I think what I take away is giving people voice and allowing them to express themselves in the manner that they wish and that are local and true to themselves are in fact the most powerful thing you could ever do. So the last question is, both of your new books focus on individual and collective climate action. Can you elaborate on how small steps, big impact, and simple steps to sustainability complement each other in guiding readers toward making meaningful environmental changes? So as I described, you know, the first uh, book, Small Steps, Big Impact, emerged out of the need to share um, in the simplest, most easy to consume manner what climate change is, how it impacts us, and the fact that we can take action at an individual level by making little, little adjustments in our lives, in our uh, in the choices that we make, in the lifestyles we adopt, in the dietary choices. Um, and then Simple Steps to Sustainability, um, as it says over here, is really a workbook. So the idea is that, uh, you know, how do we then translate some of these ideas of individual action and then collectivizing that action into tangible change? So the second book really complements the first book in that it provides more detailed guidance in terms of engaging people in different contexts at the household level, at the community level, and even at even at advocacy levels. So if you want to talk to some of your local leaders, and that really is encapsulated within the second book, which helps to break it down so that each of us can become leaders in our own right. And it doesn't have to be about opting in for tackling climate change on a full-time basis as a career choice. Some people may choose to do that. However, it's about how you integrate those changes with your life exactly where you are. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, you. Dr. Ash. We have greatly enjoyed having you on It's Zero. Your work is so inspiring, and we wish you lots of luck with your new books, and we hope that you will come back to share your perspective with us again in the future. This is climate activist Ivan Branson. I add my voice to the voices of my net zero international youth peers to monitor the action of our world's leaders to achieve their net zero commitments because together we can achieve net zero. Thank you so much. <laughs>